good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session <coughs> check the voice uh, online can you kindly let me know is the voice clear and loud enough <coughs> can you please check whether the voice what happened to the voice here Is it fine? Okay. So we welcome our online students, Dr. Anuja, Rohit, Takshira, Salil, and uh, Priya, Rahul, and everybody. So today we'll have a review on uh, apoptosis, one of the favorite topics of the examiner. Inheritance patterns. Invariably, one question comes in genetics, which is uh, a watershed topic for both biochemistry and also pathology. Then uh, one of the pharmacology topics we will review, drugs of abuse, the psychedelic drugs, hallucinogens, etc, etc. So let us make the great beginning. <coughs> so uh, I am very happy even Vizag students are also online today. Apoptosis is that programmed cell death. Lot of processes are dependent on this apoptosis. In the Greek, it means to say the falling of the tree, leaves, leaves of the tree, right? So, the way the leaves silently fall down without making much noise like necrosis, apoptosis also is responsible for the cell shedding is what need to be remembered. So, what are the classical examples of the scenarios where you see Apoptosis is my question to all of you. Whenever there is any irreparable DNA damage beyond DNA polymerase 1, 2, 3, anything to repair, then that acts like a stimulus for the apoptosis to happen. Similarly, neoplasia, why the cells don't hyperproliferate and lead to cancer that easily? Because whenever they get an idea of doing like that, apoptosis will make those cells to shut down is what need to be remembered. Similarly, during embryogenesis, we all start life like a solid mass in the mother's womb. Then there is a canalization in our body. That is how with one central gut and one spinal cord with few bones, we are uh, very egotic that we are the greatest human uh, species on the planet. So today, there is one Yahoo News, 70 million year old uh, dinosaur's uh, uh, tail was found uh, by paleontologist. I was thinking 70 million years, 700 crore years, planet used to be there, sunrise, sunset, no entrance exams were there, right? So, physiological removal during embryogenesis also is apoptosis, then endometrial Shedding during menstruation is an example of apoptosis. In apoptosis, there are four things, doctor, just like a judicial system. There is a stimulus to do crime. There is a signal to do crime. There is police always catching the crime. And the judge is saying, since you have done the crime, you need to be executed. So, what are the stimuli to initiate the apoptosis? We are having TNF alpha, any hormonal withdrawal, hormonal withdrawal. For example, if testosterone is there, prostate will enlarge. If the testosterone is not there, prostate will shrink. So who tells prostate to enlarge and shrink? How will hormones regulate? Once more, there is an apoptosis involved there. So hormonal withdrawal, TNF alpha and uh, FAS1 is one of the important protein. These are the stimuli. Then if the stimuli is there for the shell shedding, there should be some signaling that should happen inside the cell. P53, FAS, ceramide and capsaic 8, they are all the ones which act like signals. Then some genes must regulate. The genes need to make production of more number of uh, pro-apototic proteins. 
So who are the regulators? BCL, BCL2, BAX2, BAD gene, BAX gene, BCL gene. These are all called regulators. Ultimately, once a regulator also has decided, then somebody need to put a knife on the neck of the cell and uh, make it to get shut down. Executor. Cash spaces are the most important uh, group of executors ultimately leading to apoptosis. Now what are the morphological features of apoptosis? Basically, either a single isolated cell can be shut out or a group of cells within a tissue can be shut out. But what is the characteristic difference between necrosis and uh, apoptosis? Doctor, lot of times asked as a question in the exam. No inflammatory cells. Yesterday we discussed inflammation. That is not the story in apoptosis. Then there are certain characteristic changes, morphological changes in the cells undergoing apoptosis. Blebbing of the plasma membrane, shrinkage of the cytoplasm, condensation of the chromadin, and the budding out of the cell, and formation of an apoptotic body and its separation, and ultimate phagocytosis of an apoptotic body. These are the important morphological events is what we need to understand. Now let us look through a little bit microscopically how the things happen. See this is a normal cell doctor. Ultimately what is happening to this cell? It is getting shrinken, shrunken and it is being broken down and the nucleus condenses. So this uh, shrinkage is one of the very very important uh, function. Ultimately there is a formation of an apoptotic body. So this is called cytoplasmic budding, apoptotic body formation and ultimately these bodies are engulfed by our phagocytic system is what need to be remembered. So shrinks, blabs and uh, nuclear breakdown and condensation and these are the important uh, events in the process of apoptosis. Can you give me one example of such an apoptotic body formation which you can see microscopically? See in viral hepatitis, when you look through microscope, you find councilman bodies, right? Councilman bodies of viral hepatitis are nothing but those uh, round dysnophilic masses of apoptotic bodies in the viral hepatitis is what we have to fundamentally appreciate. Now, doctor, necrosis versus apoptosis in the morphology. What are the main differences? Typically, if you take necrosis, it is an irreversible cellular injury. Contiguous cells are the ones which are basically injured. And there will be a cytoplasmic isnophilia with the denaturation of the proteins which is a feature of necrosis, not apoptosis. And uh, disappearance of the nuclei and uh, sometimes if it is coagulative necrosis like scenario. What is the difference between liquefactive necrosis and coagulative necrosis? In coagulative necrosis, there are tissue architecture is typically preserved. Is a feature of necrosis but not apoptosis. Now what are the biochemical events of apoptosis? after morphological features. First, there should be a trigger. Who will be sounding that trigger, doctor? Is a very, very important uh, question. Any injurious stimuli, free radicals, radiation, toxic substances, withdrawal of the growth substances, etc., they are all the triggers. Then on the cell surface, you have the receptors called fast receptors. Don't ask me why it is called fast. Right? For exam, we need to learn few mantras. Huh? Some magical words with mystic uh, nature. Fast, back, bad. Ultimately, when you become consultant, uh, you don't need all those things. They are just a little memory in the background. But epidosis, let me tell you, to get into, get through USMLE or uh, MD exam or anywhere, you need to know all these mystical mantras clearly. Fast means immediately you should say it is a stimulus. That's good. Similarly, any uh, cytotoxic T cell also can act like a 
stimulus. After the stimuli, there should be some amount of signaling. Some whispering should occur. Time for the apoptosis, time for the shell down, cell shutdown. Somebody must whisper in the ear of the cell. Who will do that? Two ways of whispering. Cell itself internally introspects that, oh, the time for me to die, I am going to fall down. Other way, the sons of the old man will come and tell, Papa, aap mar ki time ho, ho gaya, mar jao. So, extrinsic and intrinsic pathway, which is the signal to say that the time has come for the cell to undergo apoptosis. What is extrinsic pathway? Typically, you have on the cell surface a receptor called FAS. FAS is a member of the TNF alpha, I mean TNF uh, receptor family of proteins basically. FAS and TNF, they all have got a same grandpa in the genes. Eh? It belongs to that family. So, the extrinsic pathway is initiated by the signaling by the molecules like fast ligand which in turn will lead to activation of caspases. So what are these caspases basically? That is when fast ligand gives a hint, caspases get activated. What are these caspases? Caspases are fundamentally aspartate specific cysteine proteases. They, are, they know how to break down a protein. They are also called major executioners. Otherwise, they are called molecular gulidans. Small, small, chota, chota bombs, which you can throw. They are the molecular gulidans or major executioners in the apoptosis. Who gets that name? Caspases is what need to be remembered. So, the extrinsic pathway will begin with the proapitotic ligand binding and the death receptor getting stimulated and that lead to the caspases to get uh, activated and initial early caspases means caspases 8 whereas 3, 6, 7 are called late caspases. Ultimately caspases will lead to apoptosis. This is the general plan of what we are going to do with extrinsic pathway. So first what will happen? The FAS will bind to FAS L and that lead to the recruitment of FAD in the cytoplasmic tail of the FAS. FAS has got one part of it uh, projecting outside and uh, as a ligand and one cytoplasmic aspect. Then this fad which is bound to the cytoplasmic tail of the fast, the other end of that contains a death effector domain is what need to be remembered. What will this death effector domain will be doing doctor? It will be recruiting a procaspase 8. Then this caspate 8 will cleave a protein called as bid. The bid after getting cleaved is called truncated bid and that will inactivate the BCL2 on the mitochondrial membrane and that will cause this uh, truncated bid after binding with BCL2 and inactivating it. Inactivation of it will lead to the escape of the cytochrome C and the cytochrome C after escaping will bind with epoch one and uh, uh, also it will bind with caspase 9. This binding will basically occur in the presence of what is called as DATP, deoxyadenosine triphosphate and that will lead to the activation of the caspase 9 and once caspase 9 is uh, activated then it will go and inactivate all the other inhibitors of apoptosis. If inhibitors of apoptosis are inactivated, what will ultimately happen? That lead to happening of the apoptosis. Don't remember FAD, don't remember FLIP, don't remember BID. Only remember what I mentioned in the earlier slide. 
What is that? Fast ligand extrinsic pathway. Like a parrot in the exam hall, you must tell. Otherwise, all these molecular levels, uh, after tomorrow you become a cardiologist or a neurologist, uh, make no sense. Unless, once more, we go into this uh, molecular psychosis post DM. Because post DM, everybody will be treating people with the same tablet, same infusion, same uh, streptokinase. You must be something uh, one upman above the regular cardiologist, no? So you will tell the chutney and the idli and the sambar which you are eating will have a free radical effect on your heart. At that level, you keep talking. Then everybody will turn and look at you. Oh, this guy is little a better guy. Uh, he is not the routine cardiologist. Okay. So to get seat in MD, we need to have molecular psychosis. Post DM, doctorate in medicine. After you do fellowship and board certified, once more you start talking at the molecular level. But really great people imagine, creatively think, write a story, then prove a story, publish a story. That's how medicine is progressing. So doctor, this is other way to look at it. Fast ligand, fast protein, then procaspase 8 and caspase cascade and ultimately leading to apoptosis. So FAS is very very important in the extrinsic part. So these death signals initiated by the FAS will ultimately lead to a proteolytic cascade and uh, caspase 9 and caspase 8 are the part of which part of the uh, pathway initial or late? Initial activating caspase they are called as. Whereas caspase 3 and caspase 6, another favorite MCQ of the examiner, they are called as terminal caspases, otherwise called executioners is what you need to remember, doctor. So this once more, to see the same story, caspases, how do they basically cause cytochrome C get released, how is EPAF1 is involved in this process and how the terminal caspases ultimately will be functioning. So that is all the story called extrinsic. Then you have an intrinsic or a mitochondrial pathway. So who is the signal for this? It is not FAS. FAS is a signal for extrinsic pathway. Any stopping of uh, or the loss of the stimulation of the growth factors will tell time for the apoptosis to the tissue. And uh, that will lead to inactivation and the loss of the BCL2. And basically what is the function of the BCL2 doctor? Is it anti-apototic or pro-apototic? Anti-apototic. So the loss of these anti-apototic proteins in the inner mitochondrial membrane will lead to few changes in the mitochondria. What are they? So loss of stimulation from growth factors lead to loss of BCL2. Loss of BCL2 will lead to changes in mitochondria. What are those changes? Mitochondrial permeability will increase. Number two, release of cytochrome C will occur. Number three, proapototic proteins, backs and back are the ones which typically become stimulated by that. Whatever you tell the story, doctor, Ultimately, there will be some bottom line. You may tell, my papa is a top cardiologist, my mom is a big neurologist. Finally, what are you asking? You are asking for a date. And uh, even the girl is also as trying to get a conclusion. How about you? Did you pass at least your uh, primary school? Because seeing your dad's status, mom's status, your Mercedes Benz and uh, your credit card, everything, I am ready to jump into you. At least if you have passed your uh, basic uh, school education. So at least you, you know how to read a prenuptial agreement. So that at the time of divorce, you know how much money you are losing. So uh, for every story, there is a bottom line. Whatever we tell the story, that is the bottom line. The bottom line of the apoptotic story is ultimately in exam what is asked today? Pro-apoptotic 
anti apoptotic genes you need to have crisply in your uh, tips backs and back are pro apoptotic bcl2 is anti apoptotic until the last uh, breath we need to basically <coughs> uh, remember <coughs> 